racers. I'm Frida Kahlo today. That's who we have for this month. Um, she lived a terribly tragic life. It was very sad to read about her. I love her art. We all love her art, but it was sad. Uh, so say a little prayer for Frida tonight. Um, let's see. Let's go through the PowerPoint. Frida, there she is in all her glory. She always had lots of bright colors on, flowers in her hair, lots of jewelry. She was born in, born in Coya, Coyoacan, Mexico on July 6th, 1907. She did change her birth date to 1910 because that was the same year the Mexican Revolution began and she wanted to be affiliated with the rebirth of Mexico. She grew up in a beautiful blue house built by her father called Casa Azul. She contracted polio as a child, walked with a limp. Her father encouraged her to play sports. She wrestled um, just to make her stronger. Uh, her, she and her father shared a love for nature, animals, plants, birds. Asked the kids if they remember what other artist uh, did. It was Rousseau, if uh, you guys don't remember. She actually had a lot in common with Rousseau. It was crazy how much alike they were. Uh, her great imagine came to her rescue after she was in a tragic bus accident at the age of 18. It left her bedridden for a year. It broke almost every bone in her body. Um, a rail from the streetcar that she was on was it went through her back and came out through her uterus. It pierced her entire body. Um, and she suffered from horrible pain for her entire life because of this. She had um, over 30 surgeries to try and correct some of the pain. Never went away, it was debilitating. During her recovery, her father gave her an easel and oil paints to keep her occupied. And she asked for a mirror to be placed above her bed and she began to paint herself portraits. And at the end of the PowerPoint, we have a picture of her bed. She met her husband, Diego Rivera. Um, for some of you, it, you may have pointed out that he was in our Nevelson um, PowerPoint. He, she worked on that uh, mural with him at Rockefeller Center. But she met him while he was painting at the Ministry of Education in Mexico. She immediately fell in love with him. They shared a passion for art, communism, and the plight of Mexican peasants. They fell in love and they were married in 1929. She was his third wife. She was half his size. She was teeny tiny. He was a large man. And so her father began referring them to them as the elephant and the dove and their friends did from, from then on. This is one of her paintings. It's called uh, Frida and Diego. It shows her, um, she's holding, he's holding his palette and brushes more tightly than he holds her hand. It's her way of showing him, showing that art for him came first and it's different for her. She has no art supplies saying that he came first in her life. She used symbols to tell a story in her paintings. She told stories about her life of pain, her love of Diego, her animals, and her homeland through her paintings and self-portraits. Although much of her work is considered to be surrealist, she disagreed and said, I paint my own reality. She painted 55 self-portraits of about 200 paintings, um, but she said, because I'm often alone and it's what I know best. Uh, just a couple things to point out here. This was sort of the beginning and the end of her relationship with Diego. Her first marriage, she remarried him again. This was before she met him and afterwards. Um, the red lines here that you will see, they always represent blood ties, family blood ties. This is, of course, about her accident. The fractured earth in the picture represents her fractured back. Um, this is her bleeding heart. This was also another reference to her love for Diego. Uh, her husband's work took him to the United States very often. They lived all over the United States. She missed Mexico terribly and just did not feel like she fit in the United States. This is called, I think I do, I have a more updated PowerPoint with the names, but I think this is called Straddling the Border of Mexico and the U.S. She is showing that Mexican Mexico is her homeland, that it allows for people to plant their roots, it allows for birth. Um, the United States is just all about industrialism. Remember, she was um, pro-communist and the United States was not. So she shows that the flag is being, or the United States flag is being covered by the smoke, whereas there are bright colors of her flag here. Um, she just really was not a huge fan of the United States. You can tell from her painting. Um, and then you can ask the kids what they see that's different in the paintings. Can they figure out which side is Mexico, and which side is the United States? They're smart, I think they can. Um, 
this is another self-portrait of hers. She struggled with her physical health throughout her life because of the accident. Her paintings frequently showed the pain she felt as well as other de details in her personal life. She kept many pets, including monkeys, that were given to her by Diego. She was uh, never able to have children. She did have several miscarriages, but she treated her pets as if they were her children. She painted this artwork after she and Diego were divorced. The thorns show her emotional pain. The dead hummingbird is a symbol in Mexican folklore representing luck in love. But then we see the black cat over her shoulder was a symbol of bad luck and death. There are also some religious references in here. Um, I'm not sure we want to point those out to the kids. But she did um, often refer to herself uh, in religious ways as well. Uh, this is another self-portrait. It's called Diego on my mind. It shows that Diego was always on Frida's mind even when they weren't together. She's wearing a Tijuana costume that Diego loved. Um, that's why she painted it because she was trying to lure him back. Um, that's sort of what the spider web represents that she was trying to capture him again. Despite their tumultuous marriage, the two seem to have a deep love for each other. Uh, they did divorce and then they did eventually remarry. She did say before she died that she had two tragic accidents in her life. One was the streetcar with the bus, hitting the bus, and the other was um, Diego. Her husband was her second accident. Um, this is called The Dream. If you look at the images in this painting, it's symbolic. What might they represent? You can ask the kids. I think they might have a heyday with it. Uh, life and death, sleep and awake, death is near with the skeleton of a bubber. In real life, she did have a skeleton. Um, its name was Judo, I think. He lived on the top of her canopy. Um, she thought it was hilarious. That's so creepy. Yeah, she was. Yeah, she was a very interesting woman. Um, you can ask the kids how it's dreamlike. That I would say it looks like the bed's floating in the clouds. Um, this does resemble the bed that she slept in almost her entire life, and it re uh, represents her tragic, um, her brush with death after her trolley accident. <clears throat> Close to the end of her life, Frida's health worsened and she was bedridden, but she continued to paint. She very often wore a um, body cast, or she referred to it as a corset, and she would paint it. Uh, it actually, I think, is in the Frida Kahlo Museum in Mexico, or just outside of Mexico City. Um, and then this is another picture of her. Her doctor forbid her to get out of bed, so she did keep uh, continue to paint in bed until the very end of her life. She uh, did have a gallery opening in Mexico City. It was the only one she ever had in Mexico. She, her doctor forbid her to go, but she instead was carried out on a stretcher but to an ambulance. The ambulance took her to the gallery opening. Her bed was there and she received her guests from her four poster bed. Mm. I could not find pictures. I was dying to see them, but I thought, uh, how crazy. So this is uh, called The Wounded Deer. Tons and tons of symbolism is found in this painting. She had no children, but wanted, but um, had many pets, and her deer were her favorite. She, I have a picture of her with her deer. Nine was an important number to her. It was an ancient Aztec uh, number that referred to the date of her birth. So you can see nine tree trunks here. There are nine arrows here, and then nine antler points. Um, that's referring to the, um, you know, her Mexican heritage. The right leg of the deer here appears to be impaired. Her right leg was impaired from polio as a child and then also from the bus and trolley accident. Um, but despite her wounds, uh, despite the deer's wounds, her face seems uh, to show strength and calmness. Um, and also it's a Mexican tradition to place a broken branch on a grave. So this is referring to her impending death. Poor Frida. This was her very last painting that she ever did. It's a painting of watermelons entitled, entitled Long Live Life, Viva La Vida. Um, she was very ill when she painted it, but she still tried to make everything bright and vibrant. That's how she lived her life. That's how she lived and died. Um, and you can ask the kids how this might remind them of Frida. She died at the age of 47, just after her 47th birthday in 1954. Also, another thing is, um, if you guys do the Day of the Dead project, watermelons are a symbol that often you see with um, Dia de los Muertes. Just a few fun facts. All over the world, people loved Frida. She traveled to France. She was wined and dined by Picasso, and she appeared on the cover of French Vogue. 
Um, the same year as her exhibition, she had to have her right leg amputated below the knee due to a gangrene infection. Do you guys remember which artist that was? Rousseau. Rousseau. Yeah. Um, her last words in her diary read, I hope exit is joyful and I hope never to come back. She did believe in karma and reincarnation, but she was hoping that she didn't have to come back to this world. <coughs> Excuse me. In 1995, a self-portrait brought in $3.2 million. It was the highest sum ever for a painting made south of the United States border. She was the first Mexican artist to have a painting hanging in the Louvre. Some of these kids may have been to see it. And Casa Azul, the, um, her childhood house, is now a museum where, man, where some of her paintings and many of her possessions can be found, including her bed. So here's a picture with her little deer that she left, and there's the monkey. And then this is her bed, and this is the bed she had made and the mirror up here so she could paint pictures of her, of her um, while she's lying in bed, which she did most much of her life. And then uh, there's just a little thing about Diaz de los, los Muertes. Um, and you can just read this to the kids. It just explains a little bit about the Day of the Dead. I think a lot of kids should be familiar just the with movie. the idea of it. Yeah. Um, so that's just, two, that's just two slides on the PowerPoint. And then after that, if you just scroll down a couple, you will find the how to draw Frida. So that's it. All right, thanks guys, have fun with it. We'll see you soon.